بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونؤد بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده 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 لا شريك له كيف الكيف فلا كيف عين العين فلا عين ولا جسم ولا صورة ولا شكل ولا أعضاء له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وشيخنا وإمامنا وقائدنا وقرة أعيننا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أقول أما بعد إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رحمة للعالمين وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا خاتم النبيين Brothers and sisters in Islam I greet you with the greetings of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and peace and blessings be upon all of you All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Praise and salutations and endless blessings, infinite blessings upon the best of creation the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first one, the last one, the most beloved one, none other than our noble messenger, Sayyiduna wa Nabiyuna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, upon his pure family, his Ahlul Bayt, and his noble companions and all those who follow them until the day of judgment. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with Yawmul Jumu'ah once again. The day of Friday, the day which was described by the Prophet وسلم, as the best of days on which the sun has risen. The day of Friday is a day of Eid, it's a day of celebration, it's a day of gathering, it's a day of coming together. And it's a day for each and every single one of us to go to the masjid and ponder and reflect and listen to the khutbah or the reminder which the Imam delivers in order for us to improve and strengthen our Iman, our belief and our understanding of the Quran and Sunnah. Unfortunately, we're living in turbulent times in which uh, many of the masajid are not actually performing the, uh, the reminder, uh, the khutbah uh, in English uh, in the masjid because they don't want the congregation to be together uh, for a long period due to the coronavirus and as precautionary measures, many of the khutbahs are being delivered uh, electronically via social media devices. Um, Alhamdulillah, we are in the month of the Hijjah and what a month it is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that in the shahuri in the Allah isna ashara shahran fi kitab illahi yawma khalaqa samawati wal arda minha arba'atun hurum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says uh, in the Quran very clearly that the number of months uh, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, are 12. There are 12 months. Uh, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created the heavens and the earth and from amongst them there are four months which are sacred and one of those sacred months which Allah has given reference to in the Quran is the month of Dhul Hijjah which we are currently within it is one of the four sacred months of the Islamic calendar the others being Zul Qa'dah uh, then obviously the month which we are in Zulhijjah and Muharram, three of them come uh, consecutively once after the other and then we have the month of Rajab. The rewards of any good deed which are done within these months are multi multiplied as are the sins and that's a very important point we need to remember that in the sacred months as a person he, 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 he goes towards goodness and he does good actions and how his rewards are increased is the same with the sins which he does. And these 10 days in particular, uh, these days which we are within, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes oath by these days in the Quran when he says, Wal fajr, wa layalin ashr, by the dawn and the 10 nights. And according to uh, 
Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and, and many other companions, the 10 nights which Allah takes oath to, and uh, it's important for all of us to remember when we study uh, Quranic studies, that taking oath uh, is, uh, is to show significance, is to show importance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes oath in Surah 89 verse number 1 and 2 and he says, Wal Fajr, wa layalin ashr, and by the dawn and the 10 nights and the great uh, Mufassir uh, Ibn Abbas, one of the, uh, arguably the greatest Mufassir, uh, Abdullah Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and, and many other companions uh, radiallahu ta'ala and hum ajma'een were of the opinion that when Allah said, and by the 10 nights, these 10 nights are in reference to the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah uh, as mentioned in Tafsir Al-Qurtubi and others as well. So we clearly see that these 10 days are of importance and significance and these days they hold utmost uh, importance and therefore uh, in our religion it becomes necessary for us to respect them and rever them as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and whoever he honors he revers he respects uh, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sha'air the symbols of Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verily that's from the piety of the heart and that's the piety which is the end goal for each and every single one of us now generally speaking uh, uh, during these, this period, the Imams at the Masajid, they would be speaking about the different steps of Hajj and the rewards of Hajj and how a person should prepare for this, uh, uh, for this great act of worship, Hajj being the fifth pillar of Islam. From the five pillars of Islam, Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam, uh, it's the major pilgrimage uh, and it's a great form of worship. But it also encompasses both physical struggle uh, and a sacrifice of wealth. Um, and it's an ibadah uh, in which is a type of worship in which we express our love for the creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, showing a personification of the submission of Ibrahim alayhi salam and there are many many lessons uh, which we learn many objectives and many of uh, the lessons which are actually learned are uh, linked and relate very deeply to the contemporary world which we live within and that's something we will touch uh, slightly later on so <coughs> it's very important for us to remember that on a normal day, in a normal situation, during these days, the Imam would, speaking, uh, would speak about how a person should actually go, how he should prepare for this physical struggle, this spiritual struggle, uh, and how he should prepare in terms of traveling, uh, how he will go to visit the Haram, Makkah al mukarrama al Masjid al Haram, the Kaaba, the Al Hajar al Aswad, the Black Stone, the Tawaf, uh, how he will uh, uh, pray the two Raqas after the Tawaf, uh, the drinking of the Zamzam, the Sa'i, the running between the two mountains, uh, going to Arafah, Mina, the Rami, the pelting, the Nahar, the uh, animal sacrifice, the Halq, uh, or the Halq, the shaving of the head, and the Tawaf al Ziyarah. And these are all things that the Imam would, in a normal situation, speak in regards to when it comes to the month of Hajj. But unfortunately, as you are all aware, Hajj will not be open to the public uh, the way it is in a normal uh, given scenario. Rather, only a handful of people from various nationalities who are living within Saudi Arabia, Al Jazeera, Al Saudi, Al Arabiya, they will be selected and they will be performing the Hajj. But never one should fall under this misconception that the blessings, the virtues, the merits, that are attributed and that are deeply affiliated and linked to this month they have finished no rather this is a month in which we still seek from the we still seek the bounty from allah and we still seek the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this hajj is a culmination of the islamic way of life and there are, like i mentioned there are various lessons often we talk about and the imams often speak about how adam alayhi salam is his sunnah is the sunnah of sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam and they go through a very detailed study of the life of sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam how he achieved the title of khalilullah being the intimate friend of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how he received this very high status how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with the various what seen apparently to be impossible actions Allah made them possible for him but my brothers and sisters at the same time we need to remember that what are some of the inner dimensions of Hajj and how can we link that to the contemporary world we are living within now 
one of the first reflections we have is the concept of purifying our inner self and our outer self it's the beauty of our inner and outer self often we are living in a uh, in a society that we are only concerned with our outer self our physical appearance what we are looking like what clothes do we wear what brands do we have how we are presenting ourselves we very less focus on our inner self and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes it very clear that the inner self is also important when we know in the hadith kursi that inna allah ta'ala la yanduru ila suwarikum ila akhirihi that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he does not look at your faces allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather he looks at your intention he looks at uh, he looks at your heart uh, so it's important for us to purify our inner selves from all the diseases of the hearts if we uh, physically our appearance is very good we smell nice with strong fragrance we are dressed nice but we have the ills and the diseases of the hearts where we are backbiting about our brothers and sisters we are gossiping about them we are lying about them we are causing fractions and distinctions and causing uh, chaos amongst families and a husband and wife and brothers and sisters and we have these diseases within our hearts we haven't purified ourselves from the spiritual ailments of the, uh, the spiritual diseases of the hearts and we don't try to purify our inner self then the outer self it is of no purpose to us so one of the inner dimensions and reflections of uh, the, the concept of hajj uh, even though we will not be able to go there and perform the hajj this year we should still try to re-emphasize these lessons within our lives and the first reflection is the importance of purifying our inner self and our outer self focusing on one and not the other it can be highly problematic and for this i would urge all our brothers and sisters who have tuned in and who are listening to this we are currently going through uh, imam ghazali's his adapted summary of uh, the ihya ulumuddin the, uh, the the revival of the religious sciences the 40 principles of guidance and there are two sections which deal with this those character traits which are character uh, character traits of uh, worthiness there are good character traits that each and every single one of us should have and then we go through 10 principles of how we can purify ourselves spiritually and this is a tried and uh, tried and tested a step-to-step -step guide and the very foundational elements of how we can link ourselves to spirituality so please do tune in to these sessions on friday today we will also have a session from 7 till 8 uh, 8 30 uh, p.m another very important lesson which we have is where uh, as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the quran that Allah that without without a doubt that without the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hearts do not find peace, the hearts do not find happiness, the hearts do not find tranquility. And this is a very important point and a moment of reflection. All my brothers and sisters who have been to perform the Umrah or the Hajj, they will be able to relate with me when I say this, that we often think how difficult will Hajj be, how difficult will Umrah be, when we go there, how will we deal with the hot weather, uh, it's going to be difficult, I'm so unfit, I've not been working out for so long, uh, walking excessively in the dying heat of uh, the Arabian Peninsula, it's not an easy uh, task. Uh, and uh, we have so many affairs we are leaving behind our children and x y and z but the spirituality levels are so high when we go there that we completely forget everything those who are attached to football they forget about it those who are attached to their family they forget about it those who are attached to the business and the credit cards and the bank balances and their wealth and their occupation and their authority and their status and the fame they completely forget about it they become so spiritually motivated and be benefit so much from the spiritual um uh, the, the high levels of spirituality uh, in those pure lands uh, and uh uh, and they completely forget about everything else and this once again shows us and it reiterates the quranic verse when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that uh, one of the spirits of hajj is peace and it re-emphasizes this concept that each and every single one of us if we were to truly find peace within our lives that can only be done by remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we see so many pop artists we see so many footballers we see so many singers we see so many uh, famous uh, 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 people out there famous individuals out there that financially they are well off they have all the money in the world but do they have the true happiness of the heart no the true happiness of the heart only comes from the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Another key important and arguably in today's day and age, the contemporary world where people are speaking about Black Lives Matter, uh, I think 
one of the key lessons of Hajj is the concept of equality and this concept of love and devotion for each and every single one of us who are, are around us. If you think about it for a moment, that people come from different countries um, all over the world, they don't know each other, different cultures, different culture norms and values, different colors, different backgrounds. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is making a very clear statement of intent here that he has united the whole ummah, the whole nation under one clothing and that's two white pieces of cloth. One language, one action, the destination, the goal, the faith and the heart is one. And that is none other than Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all become united under this one. Whether you are a prime minister, whether you are a president, whether you are a politician, whether you are a wealthy businessman or whether you are poor, whether you are male or whether you are female, whether you are a child or whether you are an adult, we all come together under one fold in one strict methodology, one uh, clothing to show that whether you are black or whether you are white, whether you are uh, an Arab or whether you are a non-Arab. Uh, as the khutbah, which, which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his final sermon, he also reiterated it. And la fadla li arabiyin ala ajameen. That there is no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab. And there is no superiority of a white over a black or a black over a white. Illa bit taqwa. The only difference we have in terms of when we are trying to uh, classify ourselves, who is better than others, in akramakum, in gallahi atqaqum, that you are all equal in the sights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only difference you really have in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the concept of piety, is the concept of uh, taqwa, the God consciousness which you have, the God fearing element you have within your hearts. And that is the main part in which a person can really say he is either bet better than someone or not and even that decision is not for us to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a fair of the states of the heart despite the fact that the ruling or the verdict is given on the zahir on the apparent the true inner state and quality of a person and his iman uh, which is he's, he utters the words the utterances of the of the mouth and the tongue but the, the uh, affirmation of that within the heart only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really knows what state which person is in and how and to what level his uh, his iman is on so it's very important for us to try our hardest that these 10 days which we have we benefit them from uh, from them as much as we can um, and as we mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he takes oath of these 10 days. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, peace and salutations be upon him. He further uh, emphasized the importance of this when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and that there is no virtuous deed uh, carried out in any day of the year that can be equal to the rewards of the deeds which are carried out within the 10 days of Zul Hijjah, the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah. So throughout the year, when you perform good actions, the ones which are most beloved to Allah, the ones upon which Allah gives the most reward to you, are the first 10 days of Zul Hijjah. Uh, Sayyida Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha, she also mentions uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never left out for actions. And from them, he mentions uh, fasting on the day of Ashura, which we will speak about uh, in the coming month uh, fasting for the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah the nine days which we are currently within and fasting three days of every month and performing the two raqas the two um, sunnah raqas uh, units which we read before the fard of Salatul Fajr also mentioned in Nisa'i. We also know that this is the month in which the Prophet وسلم, informed us that fasting any of the first nine days of Zul Hijjah equals uh, the reward of an entire year. There are no days in the year which are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherein worship is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the 10 days of Zul Hijjah. The first during these nine days is equivalent to the fast of an entire year and standing up in ibadah, this is a very important hadith. Uh, there are no days in the year in which a person worships and the worship is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fasting during these nine, nine days is equivalent to the fasting of an entire year. And that person who stands up in these nine days and he does the ibadah, qiyam al-layl, he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the night, that is equivalent to the reward of Laylatul Qadr, the night of Laylatul Qadr. So we should try our hardest to um, 
worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase we know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he informed us that the takbir the tahmeed the tahleel subhanallah mashallah la ilaha illallah la, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah and these other uh, uh, these other weird and these other uh, litanies with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us we should try to increase in our remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these days the reward is to such a level uh, that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said ya Rasulullah what is the reward for the person who fasts on the day of Ashura which is in the month of Muharram we will cover later um, the Prophet وسلم, said that it carries a reward of fasting for the entire year this is mentioned by Ibn Hibban and then the Prophet وسلم, uh, was asked by the Sahabi what is the reward for that person who fasts on the day of Arafah and the Prophet وسلم, he replied that it expiates the sin of the present year and the previous year one day's fast it takes away two years of sin uh, and we all know that we have lived a life of sin we have committed so many wrongs we have wrong done uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rights we have not fulfilled and even the rights of um, other people we have not fulfilled so my brothers and sisters try your hardest that in these 10 days you try to uh, encourage yourselves encourage your families and try to strengthen your iman by remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can and then obviously we also have the qurbani uh, which is wajib upon uh, every person, adult, and every able individual. So it's very important that we also perform that and we need to make sure that the Qurbani is not only the equivalent uh, to a, a part or, or the equivalent, uh, the monetary value of a Qurbani, of the sacrifice, but rather the actual sacrifice is also performed and that will be done after the Eid prayer uh, 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 in this month. Um, other than this, uh, I would like to finish with some very beautiful points that have been mentioned by Sultan al Awliya, Sheikh Sayyid Abdul Qadir al Jilani, radiallahu ta'ala, and, um, and uh, he mentions that those people who show reverence and respect and those who signify and give importance to these last 10 days, uh, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow that person with 10 charismatic gifts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will honor that person because because that person has honored and showed respect to these 10 days Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then uh, bestow with 10 openings and 10 blessings and 10 charismatic gifts known as karamat and from them the first one is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless and give barakah in his earthly life so the life which you have within this dunya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will put barakah within your lives just by respecting and honoring, honoring these 10 days which Allah has given Allah, min These 10 days you show your reverence and respect to it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will open you with blessings that Shaykh Sayyid Abdul Qadir al-Jilani radiallahu ta'ala and the first thing he says is that that person will be given barakah in his earthly life the second thing uh, the, the Honorable Sultan Al-Awliya mentions that that person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will increase for him his wealth and will increase for him his property. So not only are you benefiting with the affairs uh, of uh, the afterlife, but rather within this world, you will also be uh, uh, be uh, be given the blessings. The third thing he mentions is that safekeeping for his dependents. So all those who are dependent upon you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep them uh, protected and all of your uh, your sins will be forgiven. The forgiveness of your sins and the good deeds which you have done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply them for you. And all the agonies and the difficulties you have whilst you are going through uh, the stage of death, uh, when your uh, ruh is uh, being taken out of your soul by the uh, angel of death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ease the agonies and the pains and the difficulties of the time of death for you. Uh, those, and, and remember, these are all uh, uh, blessings and these are all uh, charismatic gifts that will be given to those people who show honor and respect to these 10 days. Uh, another thing that will happen, uh, this will be a sabab, a cause for the illumination of your grave, that your grave will become munawwar, it will become illuminated by respecting uh, these 10 days. 
And on the day of judgment, when we have the mizan, we have the scale that will outweigh our good deeds to bad deeds or vice versa. On that day, the f you will have the favorable uh, weighing of the scales, meaning that your good actions will be more than the opposite. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then admit you uh, to the abode of all abodes, the best of all abodes, the abode of paradise. Uh, you will have uh, salvation from the descending layers of hellfire and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you promotion to the ascending levels, the darajat, the highest darajat of paradise and this will all be achieved by showing honor and respect and reverence to these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah which Allah has taken oath by within the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to take the full spiritual benefits of these blessed days. Ameen. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He forgives our major and minor sins and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He allows us to all focus and reflect on the teachings of Islam, allows us to understand them, allows us to implement them and act upon them and benefit in this world and in the hereafter. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa ma'aliyya illa al-balagh.